All right, so for our project, we decided to do an electronic limited slip differential. Uh, today, with alternative energy being becoming more popular, um, there are many applications of hybrid cars and the like. And so um, we just did our project to find a way of making um, an alternatively powered car more efficient. Um, you can see on our poster board, you kind of have the timeline of electric cars. They, they started in the early 1830s. Um, in the mid, um, middle of the 20th century, uh, they kind of got less popular because the um, highway sy system improved and gasoline powered cars had much more range. But since the energy crisis, they've kind of been coming back. Um, and so our application um, with the slip differential, the way it makes it more efficient is in traditional cars, um, there's one drive shaft and the power is distributed through a gearing system to the two wheels. And with this system, you lose a lot of efficiency to non-conservative forces such as friction. Um, with our system, we have two different wheels. Um, it's a rear wheel drive system. And so there's no, uh, in the, the motors, there's no gearing system because of um, one to each wheel. And because of that, there's no um, place to apply a mechanical differential. So what we did is we did it in software. Um, so for instance, if you're driving along and you hit a puddle and one wheel starts to spin free, what it'll do is it'll slow the power to that wheel so that the other wheel can continue spinning and propelling the car forward. Um, my name is Nate Gallinger. I am the team manager for this project. Um, over here we have Marshall Massengale. He was in charge of the hardware. And um, Jason Kwan, he did a lot of the control systems. So I'm going to let Marshall explain the hardware, Jason explain the control system, and then we'll give you a quick demo. So for the hardware for this project, what we've got is an Atmel-based microcontroller. And along with that, we're using dual uh, H-bridges speed controllers for the motors. Uh, the two motors are running at about 12 volts, which is the power source for the system. It's a 12-volt battery, uh, lithium polymer. And we're also using a servo for steering, and the motors have encoders. Uh, we're using a Bluetooth wireless setup for communicating with the robot uh, remotely, so I'll demonstrate that a little bit. And that's about it as far as the hardware goes. The chassis was actually cut uh, by this company called ShopBot, which they're based out of Durham. That's a, the CNC router company. They use CNC equipment to cut parts like this. So, uh, But that's about it as far as the hardware goes. I'm going to hand it over to Jason for explaining the control algorithm. So pretty much uh, what we did here was um, we, we took in each of the encoder values for each of these two motors and converted them to RPM so we can get the, the speed that, um, are you good? So, okay, so we took the RPM, or the encoder values of each of these motors and uh, then convert those RPM, uh, encoder values to RPM so we can get the speed of each of the wheels and their rotation. Um, from that, we were able to determine if uh, one wheel was slipping or not or, you know, whatever, um, one wheel had resistance and the other one was free spinning, et cetera. Uh, from that, we, we would take the difference of those two RPM values, and from that, uh, we would convert it back into uh, a digital value, which we would then um, add on or subtract, depending on which side that it was uh, slipping on, to the desired user value. And so from that, we were able to create the effect of a, a differential. Um, I guess we can give it a demo now, if you like. If you want to... Okay. So here we go. Uh, this is full, let's go at full speed ahead. So this is full speed. As you can see, the, the two wheels are spinning. Um, when you take one of the wheels and put resistance on it, the other wheel will proportionally slow down with it. Um, what actually happens is you can't really see it here, but when you slow down this wheel, this wheel, um, this motor actually starts to lose its power, or not. It doesn't actually lose it, but it reduces the amount of power being sent to it and increases the amount of power that's being sent to this motor. Um, we, there's a lots of other different applications than just cars for the, an application like this. Um, you, can, you can take it into uh, a Segway, you can put it in that. Uh, you can take it into um, a, a factory conveyor belt system. Uh, differentials are really all over the place where you have motors and wheels. Um, we can, 
we can let it drive around and you can see see it go. Uh, the unique thing about this is we actually did this over Bluetooth, which you don't really see a lot in RC cars, so that was a pretty interesting learning experience.